Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth video in the series of Power Apps and BPM and how to use Microsoft Flow in order to profile your business processes. This is the fourth video in the series so if you haven't watched the, the previous ones it might be a good idea to do so. I will provide a link in uh, YouTube right about now. And um, today we're going to look at the custom connectors and how we use those in order to extract the information from Flow and how to make that available to Power Apps. So what we're going to be doing is first of all save the Postman collection that we created during the previous video. We're then going to import that into a new custom connector and then create a connection using that custom connector and then test to make sure that the information we get through to the custom connector is accurate. Once that's done we're going to then actually show you how to extract that information into Power Apps and then save that JSON profile into collections in order to make it available for Power Apps to adhere to during the different business processes. We hope that you're going to enjoy the session and uh, that you'll find the information valuable. First let's have a look at the flow that we're going to use for the rest of the exercises and uh, you'll note that the previous one that I built uh, from scratch during the previous video looks a little bit different to the one that I'm showing you on the screen at the moment. So the main difference is the fact that the process key is onboarding 001 and in the JSON the attribute for process key is not process ID but process key and that it is onboarding 001. So now we're ready to copy this URL from the flow request into Postman. So we click on the copy button and that copies that into clipboard. We can open up Postman and paste this URL into Postman like we discussed in the previous video. We can tell it that it's going to be a post and we need to warn it that we're going to send it some information and that the content type is going to be application slash JSON. In the body of the request we can now tell it what the process key is that we're looking for and that's in this instance it's going to be onboarding 001. So if this works well I should get the JSON profile which I do. Please note again that it's process key and onboarding 001 and there is all my detail. There are a couple of different options to create these custom connectors in Pipes. In this example we're going to be importing a Postman collection which means that all of the settings that we've specified during this request will now be built into a file and then imported into the custom connector in order for it to understand how to interact with this web API which in the back end is a flow but Postman and the custom connector won't know that it's actually running in flow. So to save a collection we can go and save as, we can call this uh, request name, you can call it whatever you like but in this example we're going to say fetch flow bpm profile. So now we specify the collection to save this request in and the name of this collection is ultimately going to be the name of your connection in Power Apps. So you can call it whatever you like but in this case we're just going to say flow bpm profile. So create the collection, select it and then save the action in there. So we're now ready to export this into a file which we'll later import into, into Flow or into the custom connector. So we're telling it it's a collection of V1, it's very important. File name doesn't really matter, you can keep it the same. And now it's saved onto the hard drive. So moving back to Pi Apps, we're now ready to create the custom connector. So to do that we go to data, custom connectors and then click on create custom connector. You'll see there are a few options available. For this example we're going to import the Postman collection which works fairly well. So profile and we point it to the export we did earlier and we can continue to import it. So by default you'll see that it gets most of the settings right. If we go to security, no authentication, that's fine because it actually adds a URL parameter and it passes a SIG in that parameter in order to do the authentication. So you don't need any authentication on the second tab. If you go into the definition tab you'll see there's only one action. 
and then you'll see all of the different uh, queries that it will build into the URL. So these you can go and tweak. Uh, by default, you'll see these are required, but they're not marked as internal uh, for visibility. And what this means, if it's internal, then it won't prompt Power Apps for the setting when you call this custom API or this custom connector. So we're just going to set all of these to default. It's fine, is required, yes, and it's internal. So we don't need to specify that every time. On SV, it's important to make sure that the type is set as a string. Otherwise, it passes this as an integer and then the authentication will fail. SIG is what it uses for authentication. So this is very, very important to get it 100% accurate. If we go down, we'll see content type under the headers. We also need to specify this as internal and it'll always be application JSON, so we don't have to specify that every time. And for body, you'll see body is marked as being required, but if we edit this, you'll see the process key isn't. So for this, we can actually go and say it is required, and we shouldn't set this as internal because it should actually prompt you for the process key when you call this from Power Apps especially if you're going to be using one custom connector for multiple applications and multiple business processes. The next thing we're going to have to do is to tell the custom connector what is the information going to look like when it gets back from the API. So if we scroll down, you'll see that there's a default section. And if we open that up, there's an option to import from sample. And then we can copy and paste the JSON that we worked with early on. So we can either just copy it from Flow or we can open up Postman and just copy the response that we got and paste this into the body section of the custom connector. And this will tell Flow, uh, sorry, this will tell the custom connector what is the information going to look like that it gets back from this custom connector or custom API. So I think we are cooking and if we Go and create this connector, it should work. So, you'll see at the top it's updating the swagger file, which is a very good thing. You don't want to do that. Be thankful that it does it for you. And there we go, custom connector has been successfully created. That's a very nice sign. So, if we go back to the test tab now, you'll see that we can't test it at the moment. The test button is grayed out because we first need to create a connection using the custom connector. So if we click on new connection, we can go and create one. This is going to exit the custom connector, but don't worry, it'll save it before it does that. And there is our flow BPM profile custom connection. So let's go back to the connector just to test it and make sure it works well. I like doing that before you jump into the app, because if you know that the custom connector is working well, then the app will probably work well as well. So if we test this and scroll down, you'll see that the process key we have to specify and that'll tell Flow which business process profile we're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for the onboarding 001 process. So if we hit test, um, it's either going to work or it's going to give us an error. And in this case, it's giving us a 404 error, which is perfectly normal. And it simply says that the operation is being provisioned. Please try again in a few minutes. Now, it's at this stage where we don't want to know what's happening in the back end. There are some very clever guys who have developed this in the back end and we've got rockets launching and fantastic things happening right now but while that's happening go and have a cup of coffee come back in about five to ten minutes and when you click the test button again it should work fine all right so it's about 10 minutes later and we are back and lo and behold click on the test button and we've got a successful response so there's our json this is exactly what we were looking for um, so we're now ready to move on to Power Apps into the app and to see what this information will look like when we start populating collections with this. 
So in a brand new app, uh, it's a tablet layout app. It's not relevant that it's a tablet layout app, but it is one. So if we go to view data sources, we can go and add that connection that we added earlier and add it from the list, added it. Okay, so a little bit worried about that. It might still ask me to confirm that I'm allowed to use the connection, but let's go and try. So now we can go and insert a button just to see what the data will look like when we get it back. And it's going to say on the collect, clear collect, just call the collection test, really doesn't matter at this stage. And we're going to call it flow BPM profile dot fetch flow BPM profile. Now it's asking us for the process key. I'm going to say it's onboarding 001. And let's see if that works. See the running ants at the top of the screen. And it finished without giving me a warning. So let's kind of have a look at the collections. And there we go. So there's our process key, the process name, and then you'll see that this funny icon over here means that it's an array of data. And if we open this, it's got all of the process steps that we specified in JSON. So you'll see each one of these rows represents a step in the process. And then some of these attributes are actually arrays like uh, editable fields or mandatory fields or step options or visible fields. These are all arrays and this is now ready for us to start consuming uh, the business process in Power Apps. So we'll cover this in a lot more detail during another video, but I just want to quickly show you what we can do with this information now that it is available in Power Apps. So first thing, let's go and update this button. At the moment, we're populating a collection called test. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's call it an awesome workflow manager. And we want to get the entire workflow profile for that, uh, into that collection. So second thing we want to do is also do a clear collect. And we now want to call it the same, but we want to append steps. And we're going to do that by ungrouping the current collection, and we're going to use the process steps to ungroup it on. So if we do that, run this button, you'll see the running ants at the top of the screen. And if we now go into collections, you'll see that we have two collections, one for the entire workflow or business process profile and one that just contains the various steps. We can now use this information and the first example is let's say you want to add a header to the welcome screen of your application to display the name of the process. To do that you can go to insert, insert a label and we can simply go and say first value for entry for that and take the process name and display that value. So essentially there is our header that we can now display on the top of the application. Um, and if you update that in JSON in Flow, the next time the Pi apps restart, all of them will get the latest version and the latest information for this. So the next example is if you want to display statuses of the various workflow steps. So let's say a record is currently in step two we want to know what status to display for that record in Power Apps. So to do that, we're going to add a label. Okay, let's use a lookup function to look up process steps where the step ID equals S2 as an example, and we want to return the step name. There you go. Step two is HR approval. Step three is departmental manager info. And step one is new staff request. So it's very easy to now automatically stamp these records with the correct status depending on which step they're in. Next, let's take the same formula and now display the options that's relevant for a specific workflow step. So let's go and insert another label. Actually, let's not insert a label. Um, let's rather do a 
control, a radio control, that'll make more sense for a, an option selection, I'd say. And we simply paste that in there. And instead of step name, we can go and use step options. So for step one, we only have the one option. For step two, we have multiple. And so on and so forth. And that's how it's that easy to display the correct options for the user at the relevant step in the business process. So this concludes our session on the custom connector. Uh, please join us for the next video where we'll be discussing the data sources in a little bit more detail. We're now in a position where we've got the JSON business profile in Power Apps. Now we need to start manipulating the fields and seeing how we're going to submit these things into the various data sources. So please join us next time. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please get in contact with me on my contact details on the screen at the moment. Thank you very much for all of the positive feedback so far and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.